Hello guys, I'm Rav and welcome to a new video. Today we will be exploring the magical world of overclocking and we will bring the HD5450 along as a test subject. You'll be surprised on how much performance you can gain by overclocking this type of GPUs. Before starting, I need to thank David Dos Tech Stuff and his videos on the GT710 for inspiring me to make this one. I'll leave his video linked down in the description. If you want to jump directly to a certain part of the video, here are the timestamps, they will be in the description and in the timeline as well. Let's start from the specs. The HD5450 was a low-end GPU when it was released, like 10 years ago, at the start of 2010, and it was intended for office use and as a basic video output, not gaming. But today we are going to use it for that, anyway. Other technical specs include 80 stream processors, 8 texture mapping units, and 4 render output units. The core clock is 650 MHz, and the memory clock is 400 MHz. This card also has three variants, the DDR2, DDR3 and GDDR3, also come with half, one or two gigabytes of memory. I got here the one gigabyte DDR3 version, unfortunately. My test bench is equipped with an uh, i5-3570K, that will be plenty for this card, you'll see the usage percentages in a while, a PBZ77N Pro, and 8 gig of DDR3 RAM clocked at 600 megahertz. One thing to notice is that I strapped a 120 mm fan on the GPU just to be safe and to allow me to push it as far as I could, but even with the maximum I could achieve, it probably didn't need it much since the max temperature recorded was only 47 degrees Celsius during the stress test. As for screen recording, I'm using my main PC to record the screen through a capture card to minimize as much as possible the impact on performance. Speaking of overclocking, after a lot of trial and error, I finally settled on a stable 880 MHz on the core clock and a whopping 1020 MHz on the memory clock, more than double the starting one. Now let's introduce the games we will be testing. I choose CSGO, Valorant and Rocket League as they are still very popular, relatively new or frequently updated, such as the case of CSGO, and easy to run. Every game will also be run on the lowest settings. I wanted the experience to be at least somewhat playable on stock frequencies, so I could make a more valid comparison and not a now it looks less of a slideshow type of comparison. Also, I brought in Unige in Heaven, a benchmark from 2009 that is still very valid to this day. Let's start with this last one. To not make it a glorified PowerPoint, I ran it at 1280 by 720 at low and got these results. Pretty poor, but expected. What wasn't expected was the nearly double average FPS results after overclocking. I seriously wasn't expecting this, I wish I recorded my reaction, it was priceless, I was very, very happy. Next, we have Rocket League. I tried to play in stretch 4x3 at 800 by 600, but it was too much for the stock card since it managed around 21 FPS with a lot of stutters as you can see from the graph and the 0.1 low percentage which made it unplayable so I had to bump it down to 640 by 480 in 4x3 stretched to make it playable the frame rate barely improved maybe by 2 FPS but there was less stutter which made it feasible when overclocked it was a different story Sadly 720p was too much, but it managed 800 by 600 pretty well, with an average of 41 fps. For science, I bumped the resolution down to 640 by 480 and got the same results as before, which is barely more frames but less stutter. Moving up, CSGO. One cool thing about Counter-Strike is the availability of custom maps downloadable through the Steam Workshop and so it happens that there is a well-made benchmark map, so we're gonna use that plus a normal deathmatch on us two. We're going to use 720p for the benchmark and a stretch 4x3, 640 x480 for the deathmatch. Unfortunately, this time I can't use MFA Afterburners since some time ago Valve banned all untrusted software running at the same time of CSGO. 
and MSI didn't bother making the software trusted under Valve eyes. So we are stuck with the FPS on the screen and the average value at the end of the test. Before overclocking, our small OC beast managed 23 FPS on average and 38 after OC. For the deathmatch, instead I'm going to approximate since we don't have the exact values. At stock frequencies stayed in the 30 to 50 neighborhood, with overclocking stayed over 60 FPS most of the times, even touching 80 to 100 FPS in some parts of the map. Last Valorant, this was my very first time playing this game and I was actually very surprised at how well it runs even on all the wind hardware, given that it's such a new game. Anyway, it wasn't possible for me to go under 720p since that's the lowest resolution I could get in the settings, but there really wasn't any need in this case because it ran decently and gave us an average of 48 fps, also maintaining a stable uh, uh, frame rate with hardly any drops. The waste I saw was around 35 fps in a big section of the map. Overclocking it gave us a big boost, making us reach well beyond 60 and giving us an average of 87 FPS with again a very stable frame rate. The waste I saw this time was about 50 in the big open sections of the map. So making the average of all the average frame rates of the tests and doing some calculation we get an increase in FPS of 80%. If you're watching this video and you have the curse of a very low-end office GPU, I warmly invite you to try this. You might get a much better experience in the games you love in exchange of just an afternoon of trial and error. If you're searching for a budget GPU instead, for the love of God, don't buy this, please. Even spending like 10 euros more can get you a massively better deal. Well, that'll be it for today. Subscribe, like, leave a comment if you want. And thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.